Extreme weather happens all over the world. Snowstorms, tornadoes, and hurricanes are just a few examples. Not many of us know about it, but extreme weather also takes place several hundred kilometers above us in a place known as the magnetosphere. This region of space seethes with its own space weather, or solar storms, which are made of speeding charged particles and constantly changing magnetic fields influenced by solar flares. The magnetosphere also happens to be the place where the majority of Earth's satellites reside. These satellites provide critical functions from communication and navigation to weather forecasting and national defense. In collaboration with the University of Michigan, Los Alamos National Laboratory has developed the SHIELDS framework to predict space weather uh, in order to protect satellites before it can cause damage. Solar storms are disruptive events in space which are triggered by particles or magnetic field ejected from the sun and propagating through interplanetary space and reaching Earth in about one to four days. SHIELDS stands for Space Hazards Induced Near Earth by Large Dynamic Storms. SHIELDS is an end-to-end -end model of the magnetosphere driven by the dynamic solar wind. It couples several models on macro and micro scales in order to obtain a very precise description of the surface charging environment. How bad are solar storms? When a solar storm takes place, it can damage satellites orbiting the magnetosphere. What does this mean to the world? Think about prolonged interruptions in radio and television reception, disruptions of the operation of cell phones and GPS, and the internet shutting down. Solar storms could also black out radars used by commercial and military aircraft, or shut down transmission lines in the electrical grid. And it would take years to replace them because these are individually produced. In a worst case scenario, it, it would be really a disaster, much worse than a major hurricane. It could even harm astronauts and spacecraft as they pass through the solar storm. Storm damage to spacecraft is not easy or cheap to repair. In 2010, a communications satellite known as Galaxy 15 was severely affected by space weather. And although the satellite survived the encounter, it cost approximately three and a half million dollars to get it back into operation again. Infrastructure on the ground is also at risk. For example, in 1989, a large geomagnetic storm wiped out Canada's entire Hydro-Quebec grid for hours leaving several million people in the dark. In 2003, another geomagnetic storm destroyed transformers in South Africa and overheated others at a nuclear plant in Sweden. Now, with the predictive capabilities of shields, spacecraft operators and power companies can prepare for these kinds of damaging effects. For example, spacecrafts can be placed in safe modes to ride out the storm, and on the ground, power can be shunted from threatened grids to safer ones. An array of other precautions can also be taken to minimize shutdowns and inconvenience to dependent populations. This is the first time that a space weather model has been transitioned from research to operations. It is driven by the solar wind data from upstream monitors with one minute time resolution. SHIELDS is improving this forecast and including new ones, like predicting the surface charging environment fluxes along satellite orbits. The forecasting ability of SHIELDS means that those running the satellites can shut down critical systems aboard key satellites to minimize and even prevent damage while a solar storm passes. It also enables operators to reroute communication, navigation, and other satellite-driven operations so that we on Earth experience minimal disruption to technologies we have come to rely on every single day.